Good morning, Mission City Church. How we doing today? Doing good? All right. Well, hey, you know, I just figured you guys always get to sit and enjoy the service. And, you know, I get tired up here. And so I just wanted to sit down and enjoy the service with you guys. I'm just kidding. Uh, this morning, but before we get started, before we get into kind of the craziness that's on the stage right now, I just want to uh, follow up on a couple of announcements. Um, number one is uh, we have, and I'm going to start from like far out to like what's happening this, this week, actually what's happening today. But in January, on the 23rd, Mission City Church is going to have their first like men's night. Yeah. There's some guys in here who are excited about that, right? We, we, uh, we recently started a kind of a life group that we're doing just for men. Uh, we, you know, the cool thing is, this is something that was on my heart, but we had men in the church step up and say, Pastor Josh, we need to have a men's night. We need to, we need to teach the men of God to be warriors in here. And so, yeah, you know, we got all the, all the low voices, and, and I was like, oh, okay, that, that's, that's awesome, you know. So, so we're going to have a men's night on January 23rd right here at Mission City Church. Uh, we're, we're hoping to pack this place out, and, and then following that, we're going we're gonna to have a place to plug men in and just, you know, just walk through this life together, learning what it means to lead our families, what it means to, to lead, you know, just, just as men. And, and, uh, and it's going to be an exciting thing. And so if you're interested in that, you would like to be a part of Men's Night. Or if, uh, if you are a wife and you want your husband to be a part of that, you can tell him. You can register him. <laughs> I know how it goes. I'm married. Uh, January 23rd, you can find that on missioncitychurch.com forward slash events. Uh, the next thing is we are really excited for 2020. We were, yeah, we, we were going to be a little bit punny and, 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 and name our vision for 2020, vision year, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're, we're, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to be kind of entering into the new year, and I'll share with you what that's going to be about. But one of the things that, that my wife loves to say is she says, new year, new me. And, and, and uh, so, so for the new year, we're, we're really excited to offer the opportunity for, for you to get baptized on January the 5th. It'll be the first Sunday in the new year. If you have experienced the joy of what it is to, to find and follow Jesus and accepted him into your heart and your life, uh, you can take the next step in your walk and, and, and be baptized on January the 5th. If you have any questions about that, why we believe in that, why we believe it's important, or, if, or how to sign up, you can go to the black tent just outside on the right, and you can find out more information about that or register right there. The next thing is, is uh, this very next week, on, on Sunday, the 22nd, at 6.30 p.m., we are having the opportunity at this church to reach an incredible community uh, with Door of Hope and foster families. So a lot of people have been asking me, how can I be involved in this? How can I be involved? And the truth is, is we are trying to serve as many families as possible. We, we had to limit the amount of volunteers we had so that we had enough space to fit all of the kids and, and the families. And so we've already capped off our registration for, for the event. But if you would still like to be involved and you're free this Wednesday at 10 a.m., we're going to invite as many that would like to, to come out at 10 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Um, we're going to be doing two things. We're going to be wrapping presents. And then number two, we're going to be writing letters. We want to we want to make sure every single kid gets a gift. Uh, we also want to make sure that every kid gets a handwritten letter from somebody, just encouraging them in the Lord, uh, speaking life into them, and, and that kind of thing. And so we're going to be writing those letters on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., and we would love for you to come and join us. And last but not least is today. Right after the 11 o'clock service, if you are a member of Mission City Church, we're going to be having a board meeting. We want to be very transparent with you guys about where we are financially, what our, what our, our dreams and our hopes are for next year, what we believe the Lord is going to do. So we're going to be having a business meeting. We're going to be voting in some new board members. And we're also going to be looking at our budget for the year of 2020. So if you're a member and would like to come out and vote for that, you are welcome to do that. And if you're not a member and you're just curious, you're welcome to come and join us as well, okay? So with that being said, would you mind, we're going to pray real quick and we're going to dive right into the word of God. Father, we come to you this morning and we thank you so much for the opportunity, God, to be in your presence. 
Lord, I pray that your word go forth. I pray that your will be done. I pray that lives be changed and hearts be won. I thank you for who you are and what you're going to do this morning. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be looking in the book of Luke. Uh, we're continuing our series on the book of Luke, but we're going to skip ahead. We've, we've primarily been in Luke chapters 1 and 2, but we're going to jump ahead to Luke chapter 11 this morning. We're going to look at verses uh, 37 and 38 to start, and then we'll continue. So it says this in verse 37. It says, as Jesus was speaking, one of the Pharisees invited him home for a meal. So he went in and took his place at the table. His host was amazed to see that he sat down to eat without first performing the hand-washing ceremony required by Jewish custom. You see, the Pharisee invited Jesus into his home. He said, come on in. He invited him into his home, and before dinner even started, things got awkward. You ever invite somebody into your home and, 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 and immediately regret it? Maybe we should have met at Olive Garden or something, you know, like, where I could just say, check please. It's an awkward thing to ask somebody to leave your house, but, but here's this Pharisee saying, hey, Jesus, come into my home. I, I want to invite you over for a meal. And, and right off of the bat, Jesus is doing something that's making these guys incredibly uncomfortable. There's this ceremonial hand washing that the rabbis, the Pharisees, they take this really, really seriously. In fact, Barclay describes how there's these special stone vessels that were used and, and, and had water in them, and these were specifically used just for hand washing. They believe that if you used water that is not first purified in these stone vessels, that, that it could be considered ceremonially unclean. And so they have these special jars, and, and part of the process is that, is that they, would, they would take their hands and they would pour water onto their hands from the fingertips down on both hands, and they would use their fists to, to clean the palm of their hand. And then, and then once that was clean and, and the dirt had been exfoliated, right, they took, the, they took their hands down like this, and then they poured water to wash the water off of their hands that way, and now their hands were ceremonially clean, and they were ready to eat. Some, some rabbis took this so seriously that they didn't just do it before the meal, but they would do it in between each course. It's crazy, right? Like, they took this extremely, extremely important. The rabbis were so deadly serious about this, that it was a well-known saying that, that they believed that, that bread eaten with unwashed hands was just as bad as eating excrement. Some of y'all know what that means. And some of y'all are extra what? Kaka. Are you allowed to say that from the stage? Um, I, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going off of what Webster's Dictionary told me. I looked up excrement just to be sure, and one of the, the synonyms there was, was kaka, okay? Um, but they believed that if you were to eat bread with unwashed hands, it was just as bad if you were doing that. There was, there was a rabbi once who was excommunicated, because he didn't perform the ceremonial hand washing. Another rabbi was actually imprisoned by the Romans because he didn't wash his hands uh, before his meal. And, and, and as an act of heroism, what he did is, is all the water that he received for him to drink, he took it and he continued to just wash his hands over and over again, almost to the point of death by dehydration because he would only use his water to wash his hands. But he was regarded as a hero for, for taking so serious the ceremonial washing of the hands. These religious leaders, they see Jesus come into their home and ignoring practices that they held to be sacred. But there was a problem. There was a problem. When they invited Jesus into their home, he made them aware that something needed to change. Uncomfortable. And, and I don't necessarily think it was, it was about the hand washing. I, I think it was about the heart. And we'll recognize that more and more as we get through this, this passage of Scripture that I believed it was about the heart. 
you know, when I've invited people into my home before and I, I, I kind of regretted it, I would still invite them back. Like, I, I'm, I'm a really, really easygoing person. I, I'm, you know, I might, I might talk a little bit about some of the things that you did in my house to my wife, but, but that's as far as it will go. Like, I'll probably still invite you back. Like, I've had people come over to my house and, you know, put their shoes up on the couch, you know, and, and I get it. When I was a kid, I used to do that too. And my parents would be like, Joshua, Joshua your feet off the couch. And I'm like, oh, my bad. So, you know, I've had people come over and put their feet up on the couch. No big deal. I've had people come over and take the last Reese's out of my fridge. (laughs) (laughs) Though that is a cardinal sin. Be willing to overlook it. You know, it's, it is what it is. The store has more, praise God. You know, I've had, I've had families over that let their kids run around and literally grab everything that they could reach to throw onto the ground. And, and let me just be clear, none of this happened here. You know, everybody that's come over to my home from Mission City Church has just been pleasant. It's true. It's true. It's like, you know, the Lord has already worked in your lives. It's, it's incredible. Um, but, you know, even with all of that being said, that would still be fine. I would probably still invite these people back to my house. But here Jesus comes into their home and he changes a, a fundamental principle that they believed in. One, one that, that was so serious to them, they weren't willing to change it. It was something that they were comfortable with, something that they were used to, something that they were invested in. How do you react? How do I react when Jesus... When I let him into my life and he challenges something that I have no intentions of changing. Mm. I mean, this isn't necessarily exactly how my house is set up because my living room is much smaller. But, you know, I, I set this up and I just thought, man, I, I like the way, this, the way this feels, you know. And, and in your home, you, you've probably moved things around several times to, to try and figure out what the ideal setup is inside of your house. And some of you are like OCD and you can't leave it alone for too long. Like it's, it's always got to change every season. But some things you don't ever want to change. And here Jesus comes in and he looks at a fundamental principle that they have and says, uh, I'm going to change this. I'm I'm going to reveal to you that there's a matter of the heart that needs to change. Like what if Jesus came in and and moved my table like this? Lord, that just looks funny. You know, I'm going to leave it like that while you're here. But when you leave, I'm going to put it back. You ever, you ever come to church and kind of do things the way that you know the Lord wants you to? But then when you're not with the Lord, which is impossible because he's always with you, but when you, when you don't feel like you're with the Lord and, and you start to, to go back to what you want to do, what you're comfortable with, what you hold important to yourself. I mean, don't you agree that sometimes we come to church and there's things that we intentionally don't talk about? I ain't going to talk about, you know, the way that I handled myself last night. Because now it's Sunday morning. The Lord is here. Look at this table. This is how he wants it. Man, I'm going to leave it just like that. That's great. Whatever the Lord wants, I'm willing to to be okay with it while I'm, while I'm with him, right? But there's things that we have no intentions of changing. And, and, and some of it is, is things that we don't even think about. You know, I don't believe that the rabbis thought that they were doing a wrong thing by, by washing of the hands, but their heart had slipped into a place where this had become a religious practice and not a relational thing. And, and to the point where if you don't wash your hands, you are condemned In other words, I will judge the mess out of you if you don't do things the way that I do things. 
because this is the way that I, I, I hold valuable. And so what if, what if the Lord, you said, Jesus, I, I want you to come into my life and, and you understand that there's, there's a, a term that we, that we use and we say, let Jesus be your Lord and Savior. I'm real comfortable with Jesus being my Savior. Real comfortable with it. You want to come in and be my Lord? Okay. I'll let you move this table. But, like, what if the Lord came in and said, hey, um, we need to have a family talk. Let's sit down. I want you to start serving and loving your wife the way that you promised to when you married her. Yeah, but, but Lord, you, you don't understand. Like, she's just so hard. Shh. Do you know what she said to me? Shh. It's not about what she does. If I'm going to be your Lord, then I, I want you to start serving and loving your wife, whether she deserves it or not. What if the Lord comes in and, and, and says, this is a really difficult topic, but I want to bring this up. I want you to, to submit to me and surrender your addiction. I've been trying, Lord. No, but I want you to surrender it. And I want you to utilize the grace and strength that I provide to actually fight for purity. Is that what it means to have Jesus be our Lord and Savior? Surrendering things to him that we're not comfortable with? I think that the truth is we all want change. But when it comes to the time that we're challenged to do something out of our normal routine, we fight it. I don't, I don't know about that. Like, listen, I, I like my table like this. I can handle the other stuff for, for a, a period of time, right? But, but he comes in and challenges us. And, and, and there's times in our life where we kind of, we take a step back and, and you have this moment alone away from everybody else and, and you know you have this because you'll lay on your bed at night sometimes and just go, Lord, I've, I'm so sick of just feeling blah. Like, where is my purpose? I'm sick of feeling like I'm not whole, like I'm, I'm not happy. I feel broken. And I've, I felt like this for a long time and I'm sick of it. Lord, I want change. I want to experience Galatians 5, 22, where it talks about the fruits of the Spirit. And it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love. I want to experience love, man. I'm, I'm sick of fighting bitterness and offense in my relationship. God, I, I want to experience love again. I want to experience joy I always have these temporary moments of, of happiness. But then immediately it seems as if this thing fle is fleeting and all of a sudden here I am again in my depression. I, I want to experience joy. God, I want to experience peace. Listen, if it was just those three, is it not worth fighting for? Is it not worth surrendering? Like I want love, joy, and peace in my life, God. Then he continues and says, I'm not only going to give you that, but if you would submit to me and begin to follow in my ways, but I would give you patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. God, I want those things in my life. I, I, I want your blessings, but I don't want change. I want, I want the blessings, but I don't want change. In other words, I, I want change, but I don't want change. Does anybody know what the definition of insanity is? <laughs> Doing the same thing over and over and over again, but expecting a different result. Lord, I want change, but I don't want change. And, and one, of the, one of the issues that I, 
I know for me that I have, and I believe that this is universal, is that, is that we really enjoy and, and, and try to address the symptom and not the root. Right? Like, how many times do you get a, a headache and you're like, first instant, where's my ibuprofen? I want ibuprofen. And my wife being a nutrition major, she's like, babe, you need to drink water. I don't want water. How much water did you drink today? There had to have been at least half a cup in the sweet tea that I drank. I mean, it's water mixed with something. Like, it, it, I drank water. And she's like, you did not. It was covered in sugar. Like, you need to address the root, Josh. Not the symptom. But I want to address the symptom. You go, I, I, Lord, I, I want to stop lusting. I, I want to stop being angry. I want to stop feeling depressed. But do we do the work to address the root issue? And that is that we have not surrendered our lives to Jesus. Are we willing to do the work? Isn't there a pill that can make me feel happy whole? And close to the Lord? Like, isn't there a pill that can do that? Like, no. That would be addressing the symptom. But I believe that as a church, if, if we want to be a, a healthy people, if we want to be the light of the world, then we need to address the root problem that is with us, right? James 4.8 is this beautiful promise that the word of God gives us. And it says this, it says, come close to God and God will come close to you. Don't we desire to be, to be close to God? Watch this, this is, this is powerful. He says, wash your hands, you sinners, Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Ooh, there's the root. And it's a big root. Because my loyalty is divided sometimes between God and the Lord. When you let Jesus in, be ready for change. Because change is going to come. And, I, and, and here's the thing, it comes in ways that you don't expect it to. I can't help but, but think about the karate kid. Anybody in here over the age of 40? <laughs> I mean, you, you remember the karate kid, right? You, you remember Daniel's son, and, and he gets his butt beat, and he's like, he's like looking for the cure, like how do, I, how do I make sure that I defend myself? I need to go learn how to, how to throw a kick and a, and a punch. Like I, I need to figure out how I'm going to, to take care of myself. And so he finds this, this, this sensei, you know, Mr. Miyagi. He finds Mr. Miyagi, and Mr. Miyagi passes the test of, of being some kind of, um, you know, superhero because he can catch a fly with some chopsticks. You know, and so, so Daniel's like, all right, man, I, I want to learn from you, Mr. Miyagi. Teach me how I, can, how I can fight. And Mr. Miyagi tells him, okay, Daniel, son. He brings him, brings him out to, to his car and he gives him, you know, some, some wax and, and he tells him, all right, just wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. And so Daniel is out here for hours, wax on, wax on, wax on, around the entire car. And he's thinking, all right, you know, I, maybe, maybe this guy's just wanting to make sure that I'm invested that I'm willing to do the things that he wants me to do. So I finish waxing this car and tells him, Mr. Miyagi, all right, I'm ready. Like, show me how to do the one-inch punch, you know? And he's like, no, 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 Daniel, son, come here. He takes him outside and puts a bucket of paint down, gives him a brush, and he just tells him, stand here and paint this fence. <laughs> and there had to be a moment several moments, maybe the entire time that Daniel's son is wondering, what am I doing? I submitted myself to this guy. I asked for his help and, and he's got me over here waxing a car and painting a fence. What is this? You know, I, I remember when I submitted my life to the Lord and, and I, I remember immediately he called me, he said, Josh, I want you to go to Phoenix and go to ministry school. And I was like, next year, right? Go. That's all I heard, go. But I, I, just, I just signed a lease on an apartment. 
this, this doesn't make sense. Go. I, I literally just brought this awesome leather couch for my house. Like, what do you mean? I don't even have a truck. Like, how am I going to get? I'm, I'm poor, dude. I don't have no money. Go. I broke the lease on my apartment. I gave all the furniture to my friends. I put what I could fit inside of my little Jeep, and I drove to Phoenix, Arizona. And all along the way, I was wondering, what in the world am I doing? I've probably made a terrible mistake. Where are you at right now? Have you surrendered your life to the Lord? Is he beginning to change things that you're not comfortable with? Are, are, you, are you still working a job that you hate? Even though you surrendered your life to the Lord, are you, are you still in turmoil in your home? Can I challenge you? Be faithful right where you're at until the Lord tells you to move. Be faithful right where you're at. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't matter. Isaiah 55 reminds us that, that my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything that you could imagine. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways. Be faithful right where you are until so the Lord tells you to move. The next part in verse 39, it says, Then the Lord said to him, You Pharisees are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you were filthy, full of greed and wickedness. Fools, didn't God make the inside as well as the outside? So clean the inside by giving gifts to the poor, and you will be clean all over. You know what he's saying? Give gifts to the poor. He's saying, get over yourself. You, you, are, you are so proud of, of, of the way that you look on the outside. You're so proud of the things that, that you have acquired. It, it's not that it's a bad thing to have possessions and that the Lord blesses you, but he's saying, get over yourself. Give it away if you have to so that you can humble yourself and be ready to submit to the Lord. Get over yourself. You very well may be in a season of cleaning the inside of the cup. And the truth is, this is something that happens, has to happen on a regular basis. I am typically a really clean person. In fact, if you go into my closet, all of my shirts are color coordinated. I got all my black shirts, all my white shirts, and then some of my mixed colored shirts. Like I, I, got, I got all of my stuff is like is laid out, right? I got a specific place for my shoes. And, and, and all the way down to inside of my house, when, when you go to my coffee table, on the left-hand side, I have my tallest remote controller. And then I got my next tallest remote controller. And then my shortest one, looking like the AT&T bars. Like, I, I'm, I'm really, I just, I'm organized. Like, I, I like my place clean. But you ever get into a season of life where you're busy and you're tired and like, you come home and you just grab the remote control and you put your feet up and, and then before you know it, you fell asleep on the couch and you just got to get up and, and go, to, go to bed and you're like, I'll clean it tomorrow. And then the next day, it's like you brought Burger King in the house because you sinned horribly and, and decided to, to go against treating your body like a temple of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and you left the, the Burger King bag on the table and, and, then, and then, you know, you're just so tired. And, and now the controllers are messed up and there's a Burger King bag and your shoes are out of place and all of a sudden, what happened to my house? But you know what still looks the same is, is the front of my door. If you were to walk by my door on the outside, you're like, man, that place looks like an apartment complex. Um, <laughs> but beyond that, you know, you nothing changes on the outside because it's easy to keep that clean but on the inside it takes work it takes faithfulness to remind yourself that hey I've been lazy and I, I've, I've let my bible reading time go I've let my my prayer time go and, and all of a sudden I'm going why do I feel like I'm dealing with anger and, and frustration and then I'm dealing with an offense that I never would have taken offense to and, and I, I'm, I'm treating my wife in a way that I'm I, I would never treat my wife that way all of a sudden things are falling apart on the inside because I've been too tired to pick up my bible 
come on, is this you or is it just me? Like God is looking at these, these guys and, and, and they get so rooted in their ways that all of a sudden they're, they're, they're experts at cleaning and shining the outside of the cup, but on the inside they're dirty, they're greedy, they're filthy, and he's going, let me challenge you. You need to change some things that you find really important, but I'm asking you to give up. You need to change some things in your life. You know, I meet people sometimes and they, they go, man, I'm, I'm a deeply religious person. I'm deeply religious, but you know, I'm not gonna lie to you, I cuss like a sailor. And you know, I, I love Jesus, but I love to party. Why lie? You're a preacher. You know, it's funny when I tell people that I'm a pastor, they just come clean. They're like, oh, you're a pastor, man. You know, I love God, but I love to party. And you know, there's, there's nothing wrong. Like, I bought a house with my girlfriend, and you know, we've been living together for several years. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, so I love God. And I'm going, listen, man, I, I, I'm not saying that, it, that if this is you, that you're a bad person. Please hear me. I don't believe that you're a bad person. I, I, I'm not saying that God doesn't love you. I'm not saying that he didn't die for you. I, I'm saying that if you're going to tell me that you love the Lord, in John 14, 15, it says, if you love me, follow my commandments. I'm just saying, if you're going to tell me that you love the Lord, does your life line up with that? Or have you gotten dirty on the inside and now it's going to take, you, you know the days when you and you and your, for me, for me and my wife, you know, the days that it's gotten so dirty in the house, we're like, we're not doing anything else. We're cleaning all day. And it stinks. So I got to get in here with the bleach and spray everything down. I got to clean the stinking bathtub and, and underneath the toilet, all the parts that are, I don't want to touch it, man. But I let it go for so long. Now it's requiring a, a, a lot of work to fix. And the Lord is, 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 is just, I believe, encouraging us this morning. I, I see the outside of your cup is shiny. It is beautiful. But do your, does your lifestyle, does your actions, does it line up with your words that you love me? Is there things that, that you don't have any intention of changing? I challenge you this morning, submit it to God. Because oftentimes what we do is, is we, hold, we hold on to all the things that we believe, this is what's best for my life. This is what I like. This is the relationship that, 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 I'm, that I'm in. This is, the, this is the, the, the house that I want. This is the, this, these are all the things that I want. And God's going to surrender it. Well, I mean, you, you, can, you, can, you can take this thing, but I'm not going to give up the rest of this. That's crazy. That doesn't make any sense. And God's going, if you would just surrender those things, you have no idea what I have in store for you. You think you know what makes you happy? You have no idea. God knows what brings purpose and fulfillment in your life. And if we're willing to surrender to him, oh, man. Some of us never experience this love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control because we're, 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 we're holding on. God's going, let it go. Give it to me and watch what I put back in your hands. Church, would you uh, stand up with me this morning? Father, we just come to you this morning, and, and I know this is an uncomfortable word. I believe that right now you are putting things on people's hearts that they've known for a long time needs to be cleaned up inside, but have been hesitant to do it. And I believe that this morning the confirmation is being brought that yes, in fact, this difficult thing that I've been holding on to needs to go. This thing I've been saying no to, I need to say yes. Lord, I pray that you would speak to your people. Lord, that freedom would happen in the hearts of your people, God, and that you would have your way. May our words and our actions line up, God. I love you. And as hard and as difficult as it is, God, I will follow your commands. Some of it's going to bring tears and it's going to bring hurt. But I believe that as I surrender to you, God, that you will bring purpose and love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and faithfulness into my life. 
Lord, have your way. We love you in this house, God. We worship you in this house. We surrender in this house. Have your way, Holy Spirit. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's worship together this morning.